Hello? Is this Mr. Henderson? There is no real reason for me to pick up the phone. The spam app on my cell called out the mystery number right away. But hell, I thought fuck it. There is no one left in my life to even really talk to. Even a debt collector sounded really good at the moment. My wife was murdered in 2015. There really isn't an easy way to say that other than getting it out of the way early. It was a random robbery gone wrong. One rainy night, some sick tweaking fuck snuck into her house and shot her. The suspect was caught two days later and sentenced to life in prison. He still sits there today. I've worked in web development ever since. The job is remote and the field caters to my hermit-like behavior out here in the woods of northern New Jersey. The lack of drug testing is really just an added benefit. I was perfectly free to fuck up the remainder of my own life. I don't have any friends anymore. Not really. Sometimes, I guess it's easy to look for companionship in all the wrong places. Senior or junior? I replied to the lady with a sigh, before settling into my armchair in my office with a bottle of wine. It was raining that night. The wind whipped the old pine tree in our backyard so hard I thought it might topple. Uh, senior, said the pretty calm voice on the other line. She sounded familiar, but I blamed the notion on the half-empty bottle of wine. Apologies, ma'am, but senior died six years ago, I said, a little annoyed at the lack of record keeping at this place. She paused. Oh, gosh. Gosh, that's not what we have here. I'm so sorry, sir. We were not aware. Please forgive the intrusion and assumption. Would you mind pausing while I check my records? A filing cabinet clicked steadily in the background as static crinkled. My guess was the woman held the receiver in her shoulder. I chuckled a bit at the lack of audio quality. No. No, no. That, that is okay. No problem at all. No worries. Why don't you start by telling me your name? I asked, cursing myself for the hint of shameless flirting at the end. She giggled. Something about that laugh was very familiar. My name is Emily, and I work with this credit card company, she said in a rehearsed tone. Unfortunately, we cannot divulge which firm over the phone if you're not on the account, and, well, you just admit it yourself, of course. Okay. I'm guessing that you're Mr. Henderson's son, she mumbled while audibly thrumming through papers. Yes, ma'am, that's right, but it's been years. I cannot possibly be stuck with the old man's debt, right? I asked hopefully. Well, let's check in, shall we? There was a panic shuffling and opening of books in the background. I'm so sorry, sir, she replied with a regretful tone. The rules are in one of those three-ring binders, and they're very difficult to find. Please hold for a moment. That's okay. Didn't know that anybody still kept records that way. Do I get an email confirmation about the charge as well? I asked. Excuse me? Email, like electronic mail? A confirmation of the charge? I asked again, allowing my confusion to turn into frustration. What was this lady's problem? Uh, we don't do that here, sir. Still a few years away from those fancy features, she continued. But as you know, late payments are a pretty serious issue. They can even affect one's credit score of an individual with a large amount that has not been paid. Okay, okay, of course. I said genuinely starting to grow worried and a bit flustered. What can I do? Is there a Mrs. Henderson in the house? She asked quietly. Miss Henderson died in 06. What year did you say? Oh my gosh, that's so horrible. I really am bouting 1,000 today. I gasped. That was it, that phrase. I don't know if it was the way she said it or the fact that simply not many people use that exact language, but as soon as she did, something clicked in my memory. My wife worked for a credit card company before we met. Her name was also Emily. The voice sounded like hers, but it was younger more hopeful than I remembered. What is your last name, I asked? The line was silent. Look, look. I know that's a weird question, but please, I, I think we know each other. I can't give that information out. She started. Okay, did you go to Jefferson Memorial High School? Yes. She sounded astonished. How did you know that? It was impossible. Emily was dead. The voice on the phone barely even sounded like her. It was younger happier, more optimistic. This type of dream was actually the type of thing that kept a million sleepless nights in the past, and yet I was awake. Could it be a coincidence? Is your mother's name Eva? There's a silence on the other end of the line, then her mouse-like reply confirmed my suspicions. Who is this? I took a deep breath. Either I understood what was happening or I lost my mind. Might as well enjoy the ride. This next question is going to sound strange. What's today's date? I'm sorry, sir. W what? One moment. She paused and shuffled around some more papers. Today's date is July 9th, 1999. It was impossible. Could it be the storm? The anniversary of her death? Emily, listen to me. 
Okay, sir. This conversation is getting a little strange. Let's keep it on the payment plan. Listen to me very carefully. One day, one day you're going to meet a man. You're going to fall in love with him, Emily. And he will love you more than anyone you ever know. I had to give her something to remember. On your first holiday together, he will buy you a gift for all 12 days of Christmas. Sounds dreamy, she replied with a laugh and a sigh. Are you one of those psychics? I'm serious. You will marry this man, Emily. He will buy you the ring you always wanted. The ceremony will be in a beautiful one, like your hometown. Your entire family will be there, including Aunt Zelda and your grandma from Tennessee. I like this fortune cookie, she said with dripping sarcasm. But two years later, on July 9th, 2015, you'll be murdered in your home you share together. She shifted the phone nervously. So, what do I do? First, I tried to tell her to avoid the house that day, to never date me, to stay away forever and find a better life somewhere else. But somewhere in the middle of my rant, the line disconnected to the tune of a blood-curdling scream. I, I called back to find a non-working number. She never answered again. I fell asleep listening to the thunder rolling through the sky. The scream from that night repeated from the time to time, while flashes of her body on the floor occasionally invaded my mind. I never questioned the call. I never asked why. Maybe it was God. Maybe it was just my time, but yesterday morning when I woke up, Emily, Emily was by my side. Thank you.